Hey guys, welcome to this Friday's episode of Inside Irish Dancing with me, Ethan Frank. We have a very special guest today, um, so just stay tuned until he joins and we'll add him to the live. Um, so give me one moment. Let's add him. Sorry, give us one moment. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, okay, so I'm here with the amazing Ronan Christofex, who <laughs> is a two-time national champion. Um, so quickly, Ronan, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. Uh, my name is Ronan Christofex. I am U18 men's now. Um, I dance for the Norik Mulhern Garrity School, so the OMG Irish Dance School. I live in Chicago, and I've been dancing for about nine, ten years now. Awesome. Okay, so for everyone watching, just know that you're, feel, you're free to ask any questions and we'll get to those at the end. And we'll start with the questions I have prepared. Um, so how are you doing right now with COVID and balancing life? Well, it's obviously been a struggle. I'm sure not everyone's doing amazing with it, but I think dance has been a huge release for me. I've been trying to balance like school and this year with colleges, it's just been a lot of things on my plate, but I've always been have the ability to go to the dance studio or just go in my basement and practice dance. And it's just been a really great way to release some of that stressful energy I've been building up. But with the help of some great friends, my dance friends and my friends from school, I've been, um, it's been really easy to actually handle it for the most part. I've been very lucky, I should say. Yes, that, that's amazing. I know right now in the US, we're in a very different situation than some are um, overseas. But yes, yes, so thank you. That, that's amazing. Um, so how did it feel to win nationals? That was probably one of the greatest feelings in my entire life. I don't know if I'll ever reach that high point again. But um, if anyone's seen my reaction video, I absolutely just fall straight onto my knees. I like completely my legs give out. It is one of the it was probably one of the most exciting and grateful moments of my life because I was coming through an injury. It was my first competition back where I was actually fully healthy. And I finally felt like all my hard work and all my dedication finally paid off. And it was like in that moment, it was like just so thankful for my school, for my teachers, for my friends, and like everyone that just helped me get to where I got that day. That's, that's awesome. I mean, that's such an amazing achievement. And as Thank you, you said, it's always the best feeling when you know that you did your best. So mm. that's awesome. Um, so what has been the biggest accomplishment in your, in your competitive career so far mm. and why? That's difficult. I mean, I've been so blessed to have such a very full career, but I think it was probably the most recent time winning nationals. The first time I won nationals, I was still little. I didn't even really understand what was going on completely. But, uh, the second time I won, I came back from injuries. Our, our age group is absolutely amazing. You know that, but, um, that was probably my biggest accomplishment. And, but then I also winning the Aractus for the third time, most recently, that was a great accomplishment because I've gotten second so many times at the Aractus and I finally felt like I had a solid dance day where I practiced really hard and it was, everything was leading up for that. And I finally felt like I had a good win that I totally deserved. So there's been a bunch of accomplishments that I'm super thankful of, um, but it's probably gotta be my nationals win. That's awesome. Um, so what has been the most difficult moment for you so far? It's probably been my injury. I've struggled with some injuries um, throughout my dance career. Like, so I think I was in seventh grade, maybe, maybe around eighth grade. I was diagnosed with stress fractures in my shins and in my foot. And that was really hard to come back from. I had to wear these like air casts for like a year and a half. I was on and off dancing for about two and a half years. And like, I wasn't performing super well in competitions. I wasn't able to practice my hardest. I wasn't able to pick up steps like everyone wanted. But the hardest part of it was just not being able to be in the dance studio and dance because my favorite part about the whole sport is just the ability to dance and just let out all that energy and just feel that form of expression. So that two and a half year period was very frustrating and, um, there were times when there was like, oh, should I just give up? This is a lot to handle. But 
I'm so thankful that I didn't give up and I'm still able to dance today. And so as much as it was probably the most difficult point, it was probably the most significant part of my dance career at the same time. Exactly. And, and I mean, that shows to people right now who may be struggling with an injury that you can overcome it and you can, you know, come back and really show everyone what you're made of healthy, you know? Yeah. Um, so what tips and tricks have you been using to better your dancing during mm -hmm. the pandemic? Well, at OMG, we're really focusing on going back to the basics. Positioning and placement and turnout is become a huge part of our steps because in like zoom calls as you know you can't really see the whole movement around the floor so we like to focus on the foot placement and um i think what i've been doing personally is i've just been taking super small small pieces and just like do it in front of the mirror over and over again and it's like it's not something new or super innovative but the just doing it over and over again and seeing how you can make it a little bit more turned out in one spot or over cross it just a little bit more in that bang you really are able to see yourself improve. And at the same time, one of my biggest weaknesses was probably um, flexibility and fitness in my dance because I always had pretty strong style, a good awareness of how to place my feet. But I would say that the thing I improved the most on would be flexibility for sure. I wasn't able to kick as high as I wanted to. And now I feel like I finally got into a good place there. And my endurance has gotten better, although that definitely needs some work still. <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> Who are some of your biggest inspirations? Oh, that's such a hard question. I mean, I love, there's so many dancers from when I was little, eight years old, who I just watched over and over and over again. And I've like looked up on YouTube so many times people dancing. So let me see. Well, first of all, all of my teachers and instructors at OMG Irish Dance are huge inspirations to me. I mean, I see all the work that they put in and all the energy they put into us and how they work so hard to make sure we're the best. They really inspire me to match that effort and put in an equal amount of effort into that. So I am so thankful for them and they're a huge inspiration. Um, I would say though, outside of that, it probably would have to be Tyler Schwartz. I mean, I think Tyler Schwartz, when I was like seven, was the first dancer I remember seeing at a show because we're from the same area. So I remember watching him in a show and he's like, oh my gosh, I want Irish dance. So I think I can't not say Tyler Schwartz at this point because I still watch his videos all the time. Go learning those tricks that he does on the Irish Dance Magazine YouTube or whatever. I watch that over and over and over again just to learn it. And he is one of the most incredible dancers I think I've ever seen. So he's definitely got to be one of my biggest inspirations. Totally. I completely agree. Um, what are some of your goals that you're currently working on? Hmm. So although I've sort of gotten better at flexibility, that has still been a huge goal of mine is just flexibility and sharpness because I would love to just get the, I don't know, like the Owen Luber's extension or the, like those kind of extensions where you're like, okay, they can kick and they stand out. So I've been working on that. Um, and then, like I said, fitness has been a huge thing and I've seen big improvements in that, but sometimes there's those days where you're like, oh, this is not a good class for me. I just can't kick. I can't get through my reel or whatever. So it's been an up and down battle, but for a placement standpoint, I really, really want a podium at the Worlds. I've been really close. I've gotten six at All Ireland, six at Worlds, around that top 10 area. And I really would love to get on that podium, just nudge up there. I mean, our competition is so good, so competitive, and they're all amazing dancers. So just the knowing that there's that possibility of getting on the podium is absolutely incredible and super exciting to me. So it's been there's been a lot of things I've been working on and just got to keep going. Even if you don't know if the competition is going to happen or not, but I would say overall, I just want to get into, into the more, get enjoying dance more because I don't want to get lost in the competitive aspect of it. And I think the ability to not compete all the time has actually helped me a lot. Get enjoy, enjoy that more creative, more expressive side of the art form. 100% that is such a good point. I mean, it's so important to really fall in love with dance and not winning, you know? Right, yeah. Um, okay, so what is your pre-competition routine? 
Okay. Um, so I like to wake up early. I mean, I don't wake up early as the girls do because I don't have to do the wigs and all those things. And um, my favorite part, which the girls can't do as well, is I like to shower in the morning. And I feel bad for all the people with tan who can't do that because that's probably my favorite part. Um, but when I wake up the whole morning, there are two songs I'm listening to on repeat. Don't Stop Me Now by Queen and The Wanton Song by Led Zeppelin absolutely obsessed with them. My biggest pump up songs could do not think I could go through a competition without listening to them. And so I shower, I get out, I do my stretch routine. I roll, I do my warm ups in the hotel room or whichever, wherever I'm staying. And then if it's close enough, I always like to walk to the venue because I like to get my legs warmed up. And then once I'm at the venue, uh, the thing that I do that I think other people may maybe not do is I put on like a reel or a hornpipe and I just spend like a minute or two just like making up steps because as weird as that sounds, it's like calms my nerves and it like makes me understand how much I actually appreciate dance so much. So I'll like just be fiddling around with like twists or kicks or turns, like just making up some fun things. And it is just like, it's so fun and so exciting for me. And then once I get that, I get into focus mode. I am sitting down i'm stretching i have my dance music in my ears i am visualizing my steps just kind of getting in the zone making sure that i am the most prepared to get on that stage and do my first round that's so interesting to me how you're talking about like making up steps because i mean that really would just kind of get your mind keep your mind obviously intact with the dancing but take it away from the nerve mm -hmm. that's yeah awesome. I, I i like that um okay so what are your advice to dancers who are still completely in quarantine? Hmm. I would say, kind of like I've been saying this whole interview, embrace the part of dance that you're not usually used to embracing with the competitive side of it. Like, get excited about learning new choreography or making up new choreography. There's so many different, so much different music out there, so many different pieces that you can look at and get creative, get uh, do something new. I mean, this is a period of time where we can like push the boundaries of what Irish dancers have done in the past. And I think that is super exciting. So you might seem frustrated. You don't really see like you have a goal ahead. So maybe try and make your goal, not a competition based goal. I think I struggled that for about a good, a good couple months where it's like, I don't really have, a, I don't really have a competition to set a goal for, but then I realized, well, maybe my goal shouldn't come from a placement or a competition-based thing. It should come from becoming better at pointing my toes or kicking higher or just making up a fun step and getting more excited into it. So I would say set your goals not based on the competition. Set your goals based on what you would really like to see improve and just enjoy the dancing. Don't worry about the placement or the competition. Just enjoy all the good things that come with our sport. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and then how important would you say having a good support system is in Irish dancing, mm -hmm. whether that be your teachers, your family, your friends, you know, how do they support you and how important is that to you? I think the support system is probably the most important part behind any successful dancer. I mean, obviously we have our teachers and we have our instructors who give us they give us so much of their time and so much of their effort to make sure we will be the best we can on stage. But then there's so many other people that you can't even see. Like we've got our dance friends and we've got the, um, we've got our parents who support us, bring us to all these competitions, buy the costumes, buy the shoes. And I think that's, I'm so thankful for my OMG Irish dance family because the community we have built there is just amazing. I mean, we'll, we'll have someone dance five stages down at a major and we'll have the whole group running over there, getting to the front of the stage, making sure we can watch the, at least the last step of their trouble jig or the, the opening of their set. And it's just that feeling of encouragement and family that you don't really find in my previous experience with other sports. You don't really find that as much. And it's, it's something that keeps you into dance, even when you're on your lows, because let's say you have a year where you do terrible at the Arrakis, terrible at the Nationals, and terrible at the Worlds, 
those might be three bad days, but every other day at dance, it's that Irish dance family and it's the people around you and support you who keep you dancing. And it's, I feel like so much of this Irish dance recently has been focused into competitions that we forget how important it is that we go to class every day and we just see our friends and we are able to enjoy their presence and just share in this amazing like gift of Irish dance and stuff. It's such a unique thing that that important community of people is what keeps us, keeps us going pretty much, I would say. Yes, no, I mean that you could not have said that better because I think as you said, right now, more than ever, we all have to be there for each other and really make the most of a difficult situation. Um, okay, let's see if anyone has any com or questions or comments or anything. Okay, so someone asked, what has been your favorite moment throughout your dancing career? I mean, you kind of already answered that. Do you want to elaborate anymore? Or Sure, I can elaborate a little bit on that. Um, so my favorite moment during my Irish dance career. So competition-wise, it was when I won nationals in Vancouver. But I have to say, there are some other, there's some other small moments that were just like amazing. This is, so probably my worst major at war, my worst major or my worst world, I got like 14th, which is still, I'm super thankful that I did well and I was injured. Um, but it was in Scotland, Glasgow, and it was rough. But the day after, um, one of my friends, Maria Murphy, who got like fifth at the Worlds, she was dancing. So me and my two friends just sat and watched the whole competition, just sat in the stands and watched every single dancer. And during breaks, we went to like the mall and we got milkshakes and we came back. And even though I was still so super disappointed on my day before, like I was just, I was watching there and I was enjoying the actual dance part of it. So like it was it was a mix between realizing like this competition stuff, it's fun and I love it, but it's not the most important part of dance. And so as much as my winning nationals obviously was an incredible moment for me, it's those smaller moments that sometimes stand out the most. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's such an amazing memory. I mean, I can relate, you know, to that in different situations, but I think it all, I, like, as you said, it all comes down to, to our love for dance. Mm -hmm. um, so someone asked, what is your favorite dance? Hmm. That's hard. I mean, it changes constantly. I have to say by the end of the year, I'm always like, oh, I'm sick of this dance. But um, I think my favorite dance that I've ever done was my Downfall of Paris 76 that I did at the most recent Worlds. It was one of the best sets I've ever done. And I worked so hard on it and I love that music and I love the choreography. It just all came together so well. But consistently year after year, I think real is just the most fun dance to do. I just love the turns and the jumps and the kicks. It's just so fun to dance to a real, a really good reel. Yes, no, 100%. Okay, we have one last question and is what is your favorite post dance meal? Mm, that's so hard because, ah. Uh, We've had, I've had some great post-dance meals. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of what my favorite one has been. That's, that's a good question. Um, let's see. We usually, as a group, at the end of the whole awards night, we'll go out and get pizza. But for me personally, right after I dance or after like my set round, I will go to wherever I can in whatever town it is and just find an ice cream shop because I need like three scoops of ice cream to just realize like, okay, I'm done. I need to enjoy myself now. Thank God it's over and just like eat as much as I can pretty much. I mean, that's well deserved. <laughs> excuse for that for sure. Thank you so much, national champion Ronan Christopher. Thank you so much here with us today. Everyone make sure to tune in next Friday for our next interview. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was so nice. Of course. Bye. Bye.